I'm a sex researcher. And I'm Bruce Beckham, and I'm an adult entertainer. Bruce has been working in the adult film industry since 2006, although he took a little break there for a few years, but came back strong in 2017 with winning the Best Comeback Award from the Straight Up Gay Porn Awards. He's also won multiple awards and been nominated for the Gay AVNs and the Grabbies. Bruce has appeared in over 25 professional scenes and countless OnlyFans scenes. So I can only imagine that in this work that you probably get asked the same sort of questions over and over and over again. I do. So I'm curious, what is a question that no one has ever asked you that you really wish someone would? I guess it would be with every conversation about my work, if they would just lead in by first asking what my comfort level is around discussing this type of thing, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes people will jump directly to explicitly sexual questions, or sometimes they'll ask me, about my work in a very public setting and while I'm not an apologist about what I do I just do think there's a time and a place for every type of question you know after I've chatted with someone at a party for a few minutes I'm more than happy to go into some details around what my work is and how it's evolved or you know just generally in a restaurant you know, if, if I met you recently and you want to ask me something about my work or is it true that you do this again I'm not ashamed about anything I do but I just feel like like asking me first what my comfort level is or hey do you feel comfortable talking about is the great way to open up any conversation around what I do. They might think that they know who you are but you don't know who they are so maybe the questions that they might approach you with might be appropriate for someone that they actually know but not someone that they only know from like watching them in a film. Right and I very much appreciate the fact that they're interested in what I do and that they care about my work and enough to ask me about it but you know sometimes there's lines where I would never presume to ask somebody how much do you make at your job or right. you know what are your relationships with your coworkers like so it's that sort of thing like once we've engaged some rapport the boundaries of what are appropriate continue to expand I'm curious what is the worst thing that maybe a fan has said to you no you know sometimes someone will their very first interaction with me won't even be a hello my name is or whatever they'll literally say things like you take loads very well and I don't wow. know how to respond to that because I don't know if it's a question, if it's a statement, if you've seen my work. It's like, I just don't know. Sometimes they mean it with condescension and you just don't know. You don't know where someone's barometer is for sexual behavior. So it's like, I never know where to go with something like that. The greatest rule of thumb is to engage with people how you would engage with them on the street. I would never walk up to someone on the street and say, hey, you take loads really well. And it's the same rule of right. thumb across the board. Right. Yeah. So in the spirit of asking you questions that I'm sure you've been asked before, I'm really yeah. curious what might be the best and worst parts of working in the industry. So to start with the positive, I think for me personally, the best thing about working in the adult film industry is how it's informed my own personal sex life and my views on different fetishes or different experiences or even what I might consider my types to be. I've filmed with a variety of different guys. I've been put in a variety of sexual positions. Um, a lot of studios will come to me with requests for doing certain types of fetish work and it's really opened my mind to really think about what am I into, what is enjoyable for me, to not just compartmentalize who I am sexually but to think like oh that might not be the first thing I would have chosen but yeah sure I want to explore that too so let's see what that feels like. That's really interesting because I think that a lot of people that that watch porn might think that the people that are acting in the porn are people that are hypersexual or already sure. into all of these fetishes or um, just people that love sex more than other than maybe the general population. Sure. And to be fair, some are, but the vast majority of the guys that I've met in the industry are just guys who have found that it was a good fit for them and um, they've been sort of exploring their own sexual boundaries at the same time. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was talking with a kid and we were going to fool around and he kept saying, oh, but I don't know, you're going to be so good at it and I don't know if I'm that good at sex. And I was like, well, I'm just a guy too. And the way that I got better was trying new experiences and that's all we're doing. So you sometimes also find that people have expectations of you, like people that you meet in real life might have expectations of you because they know what your profession is. Sure. I mean, you know, I think speaking generally, it's hard to not go into any situation without an expectation of what someone's going to be like. You know, you have to go in informed to a degree, but 
Yeah, you know, sometimes people think that I'm that I like doing certain things in my personal life because they've seen it, me do it in a movie. Absolutely, but that isn't necessarily the case, you know. That's actually that was something that just came to mind for me. Is I'm wondering, like, has there been a time where someone has maybe just done something to you in a personal relationship, like a personal sexual relationship that was not agreed upon before, that maybe they'd seen you do in a movie and then didn't ask for your consent in the actual moment. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that I've ever been in a position where someone tried to forcibly do something to me because they thought they'd seen me do it in a movie. I have had both performers and non-performers reach out to me and say they wanted to do certain things and just assumed it was going to be a yes because they'd seen me do it in a movie. Mm. And the reality is, you may have seen me do something in a movie, but you've also seen me be an architect, and I'm not actually an architect in real life either. <laughs> there are some things I would want to do with one person that I wouldn't want to do with another mm. person, and it's not based on do I think they're physically attractive enough, it's really the energy that I get from somebody. Like, do I feel like we're on the same page with boundaries and respect issues and physicality and you know that just means that literally every interaction I have with someone is a chemical equation we're two separate unique things that come together and we're going to create something different than I would create if I got together with someone else so your personal life is just as complicated as anyone else's personal life when it comes to <laughs> sex or dating un or un relationships I guess I need jerk is to say unfortunately so but you know I, I think as I've gotten older I've also learned to simplify things right sex is great and sex is fun relationships are great but um, there's really nothing that is the general umbrella over my happiness other than Am I taking good care of myself and am I being good to the people around me? And I'm wondering if there have been experiences where maybe you've become friends with someone or gotten to know someone and didn't necessarily know that they knew that side of your world until later in the relationship. Yeah, I mean, it, it certainly happened. Um, I've befriended some people along the way who, you know, maybe I hit on them or maybe we just have mutual friends in common. And then at some point it comes out that they were familiar with my work. And mostly that's fine, right? Um, I do feel to a degree, you know, it's always tricky for me when I meet people, especially if it's someone I'm romantically interested in, at what point do I tell them what they do, what I do, if they're not familiar with it already? Because um, that's, you know, something that is not traditional and not always maybe something that people are willing to co-sign. So I have to be respectful of that to anyone I'm interested in. It's the most disappointing for me when their immediate follow-up is, okay, so what's your porn name? Because what they're really saying is, I want an easy back door into seeing you naked and to seeing you how you have sex. So what I'll always tell them is like, well, I'm not going to tell you that because I'd rather have you get to know me and you're being given that opportunity. Going back to something that I asked you previously, it sounds like perhaps one of the bad parts or maybe worst parts of being in the industry is that people might sexualize you more frequently than you're comfortable with and sometimes you don't. You just want to be you. Yeah, but I mean, that's also like saying, you know, I'm aware that my job is to be a sexual fantasy, right? So I'm never going to fault anybody for having a perception of me that's sexually based because that's what my work is, right? It, you wouldn't fault a dentist for being super knowledgeable about teeth or having a really firm opinion in his head about what your, what your grill looks like. If you're coming to me for my catalog of sexual experiences as a performer, just come clean with that stuff. Oh, hey, by the way, I do know what you did for work. It also makes it a hell of a lot easier on me because it's not always the easiest thing in the world to tell somebody, by the way, there's this thing that I do, which is super non-traditional, which you may not love, you know, but I do it because it's first to them. My MO lately is to, when there's someone that I'm interested in, instead of asking them for my phone number, I'll ask them if they're on Instagram because my Instagram they're going to know right away. They're going to know right away. It has a link to my OnlyFans account. Mm. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> uh, but it also has like photos that are obviously studio quality and it's referential to what I do for work so they can get that right away. Yeah, it's a way of being transparent, but also giving them an opportunity to decide what they're going to do moving forward and they don't feel on the spot. It could be difficult in the future for someone to switch their profession later on if they decided that maybe they didn't want to do it anymore. Right. There are, are absolutely people that have been able to like flip it into other areas and sure. move on without it affecting their future. Um, so what advice would you give to someone who's trying to like decide, do I or don't I want to do porn? My first question, because it's been asked of me before, is I always ask them, why do you want to get do porn? What do you think you're going to get out of it? And unfortunately, 70 to 80% of the answers are that I want to be rich or I want to be famous. 
And the reality around doing this kind of work is you're not going to get super rich doing it. And fame is to degrees and to degrees valuable or invaluable. Um, and also fleeting. Totally fleeting, right? I the, the, One of the greatest things about the fact that I did porn 10 years ago is that I can remember the guys that were really big at the time. Maybe the perception was that they'd be huge stars forever and today nobody knows who they are or they'll look back on them because it's also a very aesthetic looks oriented business and, and, and the perception isn't oh, this is so-and-so at age 50. It's, oh, God, look what it, look what so-and-so looks like right now. They look like shit. When the reality is they've just aged out of being a 20-something, 30-something adult film performer, and they're just leading their life as a layman. And a handful of times I've had guys say things that made more sense, like, I'm very curious about my sexuality and I want to explore it, or I'm an exhibitionist, so it's a fantasy of mine to do things in front of a camera, or I just really, really like sex. I'm really good at communicating that way. It's a language that I feel very fluent in and I feel like I could excel in that industry because it's so second nature to me. So at that point, yeah, great. So the next step moving forward is, do you feel at any point in your life, you're going to be up for a position or a job or any dynamic that this would negatively impact? Because the reality is, Everybody's going to find out, no matter who you are or the small amount of work that you've done. All it takes is one person with a grudge or a vendetta to hear a rumor that you may have done something like this in your past, and they will find it, and they will use it as a bargaining chip to leverage themselves up to whatever position or to ingratiate themselves to someone whose favor they're trying to curry over yours. When I started doing adult film, two things happened. I had a best friend at the time that said, if you do this, you need to realize that at some point your asshole will be the center of a two page spread. So he was like, you need to know, you need to know that you personally will be okay with that. And I didn't feel any shame around that. I thought it's the human body. Sexuality is not something that is taboo or wrong to me. I'm fine with that. And then I waited six months. I gave myself six months after a studio said they wanted to work with me to really think it through and think, okay, is this something that I really do want to explore. And so I thought, you know, there's nothing there's nothing in my projected future that I think it would impact negatively. So so it sounds like some of the the reasons that people might give you that are maybe not the greatest are I want to make a ton of money, I right. want to be famous, right. I want people to know who I am. All of those things are fleeting, right. not really guaranteed. Right. And then some of the better reasons might be you really like sex, you want to explore your sexuality, maybe you're an exhibitionist. Right. Um, and then also taking into consideration, like, people are going to see it. Your right. parents are going to see it, you're cousins are going to see it, people will find out about it because it does spread like wildfire, right. especially if there's someone who is against you or someone who really yeah. wants to try to embarrass you, which every one of us have someone like that in our lives because it's 2019 and there are just a lot of people that can be assholes and want to extort things from people. I also love that you said, think about it for six months. Yeah. Give yourself some time to decide is this something that I want to do or something that I don't want to do? And I think that would be great advice for pretty much any life decision or something that could impact yeah. your futures. Like, it's only six months. Just don't dive into anything that can be this impactful to your life without really giving yourself the fair shake of thinking it through. Bruce, tell everybody where they can find you. Okay, so I can be found three places on social media. My Instagram is at Brucellaneous. My Twitter is Bruce Beckham Triple X, and my OnlyFans account is OnlyFans.com backslash Bruce Beckham Triple X. Okay, so if you're looking for any of that, go ahead and find one of the accounts, and I'm sure that you can find links to the rest of them. Absolutely, and in order, Instagram is where you can see a little bit of my work life and a little bit of my personal life. My Twitter is where I tend to do all things career and porn related. And then the OnlyFans, we know what happens there. So I actually really like your Instagram page because you do a lot of stories where you just have like your own personality and you're out there just being kind of like silly and funny and hanging right. around the city yeah. and promoting some of your stuff. Um, but people really get to see like a, a piece of you and not just like, look at my work, look at my work, look at my work, buy my right. stuff, but like also this is who I am. It's a way for me to sort of give back to people who are interested in me like, okay, so here's some shit that I think is cool or funny or amazing or something I ate that was fucking awesome or a movie mm -hmm. I saw or a joke I saw or a meme I saw or like something great that happened politically, you know? It's like, okay, you get you get to see 
me naked and have sex and fool around with hot guys. And now also, here's some other shit that I can show you. Very cool. So follow me. <laughs> Please. <laughs> and you Thanks. can find um, all of my information below along with links to all of his information. And we may do this again in the future. So if you have some questions for Bruce, go ahead and send them to me at the email address below. And I will see you next time. Bye. Thanks. Thanks for watching. I've got a lot of content in production and I don't want you to miss out. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And in the meantime, check out one of these other videos. And don't forget to send me your questions about sex to thomastalksabout at gmail.com.